Hello friends, welcome to Line Take. Hope you are enhancing your coding skills. And in this video, we are going to make a music player using Python. And we will try to make it look like this. So without wasting time, let's get started. Our first and very very important step will be hitting the subscribe button and hitting the like button. Also don't forget clicking the bell button to get all the notification of your latest video first. And as we always start, we will first import all the libraries which we will need in the further code. Okay, import tkinter as tk and following our usual approach, we will first define root equals to tk dot tk which we usually do. If you don't know about this, you can watch our previous videos so you will get a clear idea. Then root dot main loop and now let's define the geometry and the title of the window. So by using root dot geometry, we will set the window size. In this case, I am using 320 by 600. You can set any of your choice or the resolution that fit on your screen. So after defining the title, let's run and check it. Oops, something is wrong. Actually, we have did something wrong in the settings. So let's go into the settings and correct it. Okay, so going in system and okay, here are some options which you can try if you also face the same problem. Okay, so after adjusting all the settings, now we will try it again. And I will change the resolution that will fit to my screen and run it and we need to remove the equals to marks else it will not work so let's run it and check whether it works okay so i think we again have to set the different resolution for our screen okay so let me try different resolutions which will be most suitable for our work so i think that this will be perfect resolution so let's run it and check okay so we have to do small adjustments so let's do it and let's try again running it okay so i think this one's perfect so first we will have to set the background so i think first we will have to set the background as white so i am using root.config and we will set the background as white using the following syntax okay so let's run it and see whether it works or not so yes the background has been changed to white so guys now is the time to create image files for the buttons which we will place in the gui we are not going to directly download it from the web because anyone can give a copyright claim for using them in our video so i am going to create it using pixel app i have already created a template so that we can just adjust some shapes and create the buttons while editing i will fast forward this part so that it will save our time and if you want to watch this part you can do it by making the settings at 0.25x and from youtube to be careful while selecting the dimensions of images cause the same image is going to appear in our GUI. So we are done with saving the images now we are going to continue our work from the code. So our next step will be creating a frame basically I am thinking that we will create a frame and we will enter some different widgets into it for example the thumbnails or some other stuff. We will place it using frame.pack and before that we will first define the frame which will be present in root window and we will define its background by using bg equals to white. So let's run and see whether it works or not. So it is showing an error. So actually we have did some syntax error. So let's correct it. Actually we have to write tk.frame and then the next syntax. Um, for an instance we will comment out the root.config portion so that we can figure out the exact difference. So let's run and try again. Okay so it's looking quite grey. So no problem, we will handle it later. And now our plan is to fix some buttons. For example, play and pause and many more. So let's create a workspace for it. Okay, so hashtag and then buttons. So first we will create a play button. For that we will first create a variable. We will name this variable as play and button. And then we will follow the same procedure as we always do. There first we will write button 
and then we have to put it in root window so we have written root and for instance we will display some text or an alphabet so i am writing it as p so we have to do the same for other buttons so i am just copying and pasting it in same format and just changing the forward so that no overlapping is done and almost we have defined all the variables for each button now we just have to change the text that they are gonna display so that we can understand that what exactly is happening in our code and what exactly is the part of this code is going to display also we have to fix them first in our window so let's copy all the variables and then fix them using read so copy play button paste it and first we will paste all the variables and then we will place them using grid so copying forward button pasting it copying back button and again pasting it so now let's place them using grid function so play button dot grid and then column and row in which we want it to be displayed we have to do the same for other buttons too so simply copying and pasting them for now we will just change the column so that we could know how actually it is going to display on the screen and then we'll adjust it accordingly so let's run and give it a try mm, error okay so it's because okay i have understood it is because we have used pack and grid in this program and we can use one at a time in one program so after correcting and changing it to grid let's give it a try okay so as you can see all the buttons are visible now our task is to align it in the way in which we want it to display now basically what our idea is we have to place the buttons in such a way that when we will expand our window then they will adjust it accordingly and for that purpose we are using sticky equals to s and s in the sense we are defining it to the direction of south which obviously means downwards mm, actually it's sticky and we have did a spelling mistake so let's correct it let's give it a try let's run it and see that if whether something has changed oops nothing has changed so i think we have to try something else but first let's apply the sticky function to all the buttons so that we can understand that what are the further steps that we have to take for making them align in a way which in which we want so let's add it to last one and let's run it and see whether it works or not mm, as you can see nothing has changed so i think we need to find a different way to overcome this so for now first let's align all the buttons in a row and to do that we have to specify the row and then we will choose row 1 which basically means the all the buttons will be displayed in the first row let's paste the same in the last row and then let's try running it okay so as you can see we have aligned all the buttons in a row so our next task is to insert space between these buttons and for that we are going to use padx so typing padx equals to 20 and okay i think this much space is enough for each button so let's copy and paste the same syntax to for all buttons so copying and then pasting it to all the buttons and now let's try running it and check whether it works or not so let's click on run i think this much space is enough for each button and now let's go and put images on each of the button but before that to make it realistic we will use two buttons first one will be shuffle button and the second one will be loop button so as we did earlier we will first define the variables and then we will simply copy and paste the same stuff by just changing the title of the buttons so let's set it where we want it to be displayed on our gui and we are also going to place a button on the right side which will be a loop button which is going to play the song again and again in a loop so let's define it too so we will name the variable as the reverse underscore button and then the same syntax in front of it now let's define the reverse button and to do that we will perform the same step which we did just now to define shuffle button so let's copy the same stuff and paste it here mm, i think we should change the reverse button to loop button okay so run let's run it so guys as you can see the buttons are placed but they are overlapping so let's fix them and try again running it so guys now i am going to change their padding and row and column so that we can align them in a row i am going to fast forward this part so that our video will not go too long if you want to watch this part carefully then you can go to youtube settings and change the speed to 0.25x so now our task is to place the images on the button so that they exactly look like play and pause button 
So now let's create a workspace where we will input all the images which we will need further. And to do that first we will have to assign some variables and I am going to keep the same pattern for all variables and I will just say last part of the variables which will be defining which type of the image it will be. So as you can see we have pasted the same pattern for all and now we will paste which type of button it will be. So I am copying the variables name and just pasting in front of the image underscore. But first let's do some changes which will make our code look better. Now we will assign the images to this variable. So this part is important, watch it carefully. So the method is we have to write photo image in front of it and then in the brackets we have to write file and then we have to paste the path of the file inside it. I am going to use ES file explorer to copy the path of the image file present in our device which we have made earlier. So directly I will navigate to the pixel app folder where we have created all the images. So now I am going to copy the path of this play button using this method. So I have copied it and I will paste it here. I am going to do the same for all buttons. So if you want to watch this clearly then you can go to YouTube settings and watch them at 0.25x. And friends one very important point is you have to save all the images at a defined uh, size. For example in this case I have saved all the images at 14 to 40 pixels. Now the copy pasting work is over. Now we have to assign the variables to all the buttons. And then we will be able to see all the images on the buttons. So let's remove the text part and enter image part instead of it. And let's copy the variable which we have which will be coming in this place. And now let's try again running it. Oops, there is an error. Let's see why the error happened. Okay. So the error happened because the I in the photo image should be capital. So I have did it and corrected it. And now let's try and check it again. Mm, actually we are not able to see the images on the buttons but let's first copy all the image variables and paste inside the buttons and then we will see whether it works or we have to do any corrections in it. So we have almost completed our task and let's try and run it and check whether it works or not. Okay, so as you can see the three images are placed which means that the code is working. Actually we have not created the images for shuffle and the loop button and that's not a big task we will handle it later. And now our task is to make the buttons look realistic. So to do that first we will remove the border width and let's try running it whether it works. Okay, so as you can see it's quite improved so let's do the same for other buttons too. So guys as you can see these buttons are looking quite cool. So guys this was just the introduction and the first part of this series. And in the next part we will try to give it a professional touch and do all the coding fastly. So that's it for this video. Meet you in the next video. Till that have a good day. Take care.